All right, so this is going to be my second uh, example with the half angle identities. Uh, so you can see we've got the formulas for the half angle identities for sine, cosine, and tangent. And uh, you can see that the sine and cosine half angle identities are really similar. It's just the minus and the plus sign is what's different there. And for tangent, we have two different formulas here. You can use either one. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and get started on example two. So it says if sine A equals negative 12 over 13 with angle A between 180 and 270 degrees, so that means we are in the third quadrant, find the six trigonometric functions of A over 2. So we're wanting to find sine, cosine, tangent secant, cosecant, and cotangent of A over 2. Alright, so we don't have that many formulas, do we? We don't have formulas for uh, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, but that's fine because if we can find sine of A over 2, well then cosecant of A over 2 would just be the reciprocal of sine A over 2. And secant of A over 2 is the reciprocal of cosine A over 2, and cotangent A over 2 is the reciprocal of tangent of A over 2. Alright, so let's go ahead and write down our formulas for sine and cosine. So we've got sine A over 2. Well, I'm going I'm to use a different color here. So I've got sine A over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine A over 2. Cosine A over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine of A over 2. And tangent A over 2 is We'll just write this one down. Okay. But if you from if you remember back when you were first learning your trig identities, you remember that tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. So that means that tangent of a over two is equal to sine of a over two divided by cosine a over 2. So we don't even need the tangent formula. All we have to do is find sine and cosine and then we can use this identity here to find tangent a over 2. Alright, so let's go ahead and get rid of this one. And I mean, if all they asked you to find was tangent a over 2, you could just use this formula that I'm erasing. Okay. All right, so in order to find sine A over 2 and cosine A over 2, we need to know what cosine A is. Well, all they give us is sine A, but we can find cosine A since we know sine A. If you remember your Pythagorean identities, it says that sine squared A plus cosine squared A equals 1. So I can take this negative 12 over 13 and plug it in for sine A. So negative 12 over 13 squared, because see the negative 12 over 13 is just sine A, but I've got sine squared so I have to square it, plus cosine squared A equals 1. So if I square that I get 144 over 169 plus cosine squared A equals 1. Alright, so let me subtract 144 over 169 to both sides and when I do that it goes out over here it goes to 0 and so that means I would have to subtract it over here. Okay, 
and 1 minus this, well, I'm getting the common denominator of 169, so the numerator would have to be 169. So that's going to give me cosine squared A is equal to, and that's going to be 25 over 169. So cosine A is equal to 5 over 13, or cosine A is equal to negative 5 over 13. Okay. Now, look at this. A is in the third quadrant. Okay. So our angle A is in the third quadrant. And if you remember, all students take calculus. The only trig functions that are positive in the third quadrant is tangent and cotangent. So cosine's negative in the third quadrant. So this one's not my answer. It's negative 5 over 13. Okay. So let's go back up here and write that. Cosine A is negative 5 over 13. Okay. See, that, that's what I need this to plug into my formulas. All right, so let's go ahead and get this out of the way so we can have some room to work. And, and, and that's really all this is, is uh, when you're doing these, is just writing down the formula, see what you need, find it, and plug it in. All right. So now, if you notice here, we have we have sine a over two and cosine a over two is plus or minus plus or minus. Okay. Well, which one is it? Is it the positive or the negative? The positive or the negative? Okay. Well, we know that a is between 180 and 270 degrees. Okay. But what we need to know is where is A over 2? Well, if I divide this by 2, then that means I would have A over 2. Well, that means I have to divide these by A over 2 as well. So I'm going to get A over 2 is between 90 and 135 degrees. So that tells me that I'm in quadrant 2. And since I'm in quadrant 2, well, sine is positive in quadrant 2. So uh, that's positive. I don't have to write the positive sign because if you don't have a sign in, in front of there, you know that it means positive. And cosine, cosine is negative in quadrant 2. So I'm going to erase my plus or minus here. This equals negative square root of 1 plus cosine a over 2. All right. So now all we have to do is take this negative 5 over 13 and plug it in for cosine a in each formula. All right, so let's do that. So I get sine a over 2 is equal to the square root of 1 minus uh, negative 5 over 13 over 2. So sine a over 2 is equal to the square root of 1 plus 5 over 13, all that over 2. Now, to simplify this, what am I going to do? Well, remember, you can look at this as all of these as being fractions. Remember how to simplify complex fractions from algebra? You multiply each term by the common denominator. There's a denominator of 1, there's a denominator of 1, and here's a denominator of 13. So I'm going to multiply each term by the common denominator. So each term 
it's multiplied by 13 and that's going to get rid of the fractions underneath the radical so I get sine a over 2 is equal to the square root 13 times 1 is 13 plus 5 okay because the 13's cancel over 26 and so I get sine a over 2 equals the square root of 18 over 26 and so sine a over 2 is equal to the square root of let's see what 9 over 13 and so sine of a over 2 is equal to the square root of 9 over the square root of 13 that's a, that's a 3 there and so I get sine of a over 2 is equal to 3 over the square root of 13 all right, and then your teacher might have you rationalize denominator, so let's go ahead and do that. So multiply numerator and denominator by square root of 13 over square root of 13. And so that's going to give me sine of a over 2 is equal to 3 square root of 13 over 13. So there's sine a over 2. Okay. Now... I can come up here and solve for cosine a over 2 and I'm going to do the same exact thing that I did over here okay all right so I've got cosine a over 2 is equal to negative square root of 1 all right so that's going to be plus a negative 5 over 13 so that's just going to be minus 5 over 13 over 2 and then once again I'm going to do just like I did here okay I'm going to multiply everything by 13 that's a 13 right there I know it's hard to see okay so I get cosine a over 2 is equal to negative and that's going to be 13 minus 5 over 26 and so cosine a over 2 equals negative square root of 8 over 26. And so cosine a over 2 is negative square root of 4 over 13. I just reduced the fraction just like I did from here to here. Okay. So cosine a over 2 is negative square root of 4 over square root of 13 and cosine a over 2 is equal to negative 2 over the square root of 13 and then once again let's go ahead and rationalize the denominator so I'm going to multiply by square root of 13 over square root of 13 so that's going to give me cosine a over 2 is equal to negative 2 square root of 13 over 13 and there is cosine a over 2 alright so now we need to find tangent a over 2 well tangent a over 2 tangent a over 2 it's just the sine of a over 2 over cosine a over 2. Alright, so here's sine a over 2, here's cosine a over 2. But let me show you this. Instead of plugging these in, okay, and, and you can plug these in, that's fine. Okay, you'll get the right answer. But the arithmetic may be just a little bit messier if you do that. What I like to do is I like to take the value before I rationalize the denominator 
and plug that in. You can see it's not as the numbers aren't as messy as these. Okay, and and it's the same thing. This number is the same thing as this number, and this number is the same thing as this number. Okay, you can plug it into your calculator and verify it. All right, so I'm going to plug in the values before I rationalize the denominator. So that's 3 over the square root of 13 over negative 2 over the square root of 13, which is 3 over the square root of 13. Now, remember, it's this fraction divided by this fraction. And remember how to divide fractions? It's this fraction times the reciprocal of this one. So times negative square root of 13 over 2. And then you can see the square root of 13 is cancel, so I'm left with negative 3 halves for tangent a over 2. Alright, now we need to find secant a, cosecant, I mean, I'm sorry, we need to find cosecant a over 2, secant a over 2, and cotangent of a over 2. Well, cosecant of a over 2 is the reciprocal of sine a over 2. But look at this. If I take the reciprocal of this, this radical is going to be in the denominator and I'll have to rationalize the denominator again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the reciprocal of this and that's going to give me the square root of 13 over 3 and I don't have to rationalize the denominator, I'm done there's my answer. And then the same thing with secant a over 2. Instead of taking the reciprocal of this one and then having a rationalized denominator, I'm just going to take the reciprocal of this one and that's going to give me negative square root of 13 over 2. And that would be my answer for secant a over 2. And, and you can take each of these values here, you can take the reciprocal of them and then rationalize the denominator and you'll see you'll come up with this answer. And same thing here, if you take the reciprocal of this, rationalize the denominator, you'll get this as an answer. Alright, and now cotangent of a over 2, well cotangent is reci reciprocal of tangent. So I can just take this value, take the reciprocal, and that gives me negative 2 thirds. And those are my six trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So I hope this video's helped. Uh, I hope, uh, I hope you, you liked it. I hope it helped a lot. And if you like them, you can subscribe. All right, thanks.